Back in December, I traded in my 2019 Tesla Model 3 standard range for a 2021 Tesla Model 3 long range. And since then, a few people have been asking me, Jack, what about the Model Y? Would you ever consider trading in your new Tesla Model 3 for the Tesla Model Y? Because if you don't know, Tesla Model Y is scheduled to release in the UK in 2022. A Tesla Model Y is very similar to a Model 3. Basically, they've gone into Photoshop and they've done this. That's a Model Y. <laughs> it's just a much bigger, more space efficient version, and I would be interested. So first of all, in this video, I'm gonna go over what I like about the Model Ys compared to the Model 3s, and then we'll go over the things that are potentially stopping me from being able to trade in my current Model 3. So these days, since the 2021 Model 3 refresh, the Model Y and the Model 3, they're very, very similar. For example, these days, they've both got that fancy power-assisted boot, which you know I absolutely love. They've also both got the nice, pretty black trim. The turbine wheels that the Model Y had, that was a big bonus but since the new model 3 refresh if you were to get a performance model 3 you can now get those fancy turbine wheels on a model 3 you can see them here they just come included if you purchase a model 3 performance however if you purchase a long range like i did all we've got access to are the default aero wheels or the 19 inch sports wheels which are an extra 1450 pounds which i like that's what i chose but they're still not as nice as the turbine wheels in my opinion and that's a bit annoying that i don't get the choice of having the turbine wheels but anyway the model 3 and the model y are likely to be quite similar prices they look so similar. If you were sat in the driver's seat, it would be very difficult to tell which model you were in. So why would I want one? Why would I want to spend even more money on getting a Model Y when I've already got an incredible 2021 Model 3? Well, take a look at this. My Model 3's cargo volume is 425 litres, so... That basically means if you fill the car with water, that's how much water you could get in there. I don't advise doing that, by the way. But that basically means you can get a lot of luggage and boxes and bags, whatever you want to carry. You can get 425 litres worth in your car. Well, guess how much cargo space the Model Y can hold? Keep in mind, it's basically just a stretched up Model 3. A Model Y can hold... 1,868 litres. That is so much more space. It is ridiculous. And the main reason for that is that unlike the Model 3, it isn't a saloon car. So it's got that big, big boot. Like, I'm talking like, poor big. Like, jeez. You've seen my boot many times. You've seen me climb into my boot on several occasions for unknown reasons. There's not a crazy amount of room in there. When I slept in the car, the big issue that I had was how low down and rectangular the boot was. Whereas in the Model Y, it doesn't have that issue. When I had to transport my brother's cake for his wedding, it was very stressful shoving that cake into my narrow boot. The boot itself's got a decent amount of space, but the boot entrance is very restricting. Whereas in the Model Y, because of how ridiculously ginormous that hatchback boot is, the kind of things that you can fit into the car change completely. And if you want, you can get it configured to have seven seats rather than five. Which obviously, if you've got a large family or whatever, that's a big bonus. So that's why I like the Model Y. It's basically a Model 3, but it's more practical because of just how much stuff you can shove in there. Now here we have a potential area for concern. Old viewers will know my garage is tiny. I don't exactly know how my Model 3 fits in the garage, but it fits in there just. And it is a real squeeze trying to get in and out of that car. So obviously because the Model Y is significantly bigger, there is a risk that if I was to get on, it wouldn't actually fit in my tiny, tiny garage. But if we take a look at the widths and the lengths online, Model 3 is 1,849 millimeters long, whereas the Model Y is 1,920. Which sounds like a big difference, but when you convert it into centimeters, it's only actually about that much wider. So it would be even more of a squeeze driving the car into the garage, but it's doable. It's possible. And and then in terms of length, the Model 3 is 4,694 millimeters, whereas the Model Y is 4,775. So once again, it's only like that much longer. It's, it's not really that big a deal. I would not be able to open the car's boot with the garage door closed, but I can't open the car boot with the garage door closed at the minute. So it'd be a little bit more of a squeeze, but it would still fit in the garage. <laughs> and hey, you never know by 2022, when this vehicle is actually available, maybe we'll have moved house somewhere with a bigger garage. Please, I really want a big garage. <laughs> I don't want a giant office garage. I just want to be able to get out of my cow without my head looking like this because of the cupboards that are just there. Anyway, so now that we've established I like the Model Y, it's time to talk about the finances. Because as you've heard already, this Model Y is very similar to the car I've already got. Other than I could put a box that was like this tall into the boot without having any issues. I think there's been two occasions in the year and a half that I've had a Tesla Model 3 where I have had difficulty fitting something into the car. The first one was my granddad's electric scooter. There was enough space for the scooter once it was in there, but because of how narrow that little saloon style entrance is, the scooter scrapes the boot on the way in. Whereas in the Model 
one on wine, that wouldn't be an issue. And then the only other time where things were a bit of a squeeze were just at Christmas when we had loads of presents and clothes because we were going to visit Becky's family. But overall, we've not really had any major issues. So I'm not desperate for a Model Y. But if I could get one relatively cheaply, I would have one because it does have some bonuses. Now, when I purchased my current Tesla, it cost £55,000, which is a lot. But I was able to trade in my original Tesla Model 3 for £37,200, which considering I wasn't selling privately, the car wasn't in perfect condition. I'd had the car for over a year. I thought that was a fairly reasonable trading price. And basically it meant that I had £17,940 left to spend, which we then earned back over the next couple of months by creating content about the new car. Now, a ginormous chunk of this £17,940 came from having to purchase the full self-driving upgrade for a second time. Because when I purchased my original Tesla, it cost £5,000 for that upgrade, which is basically just a software update. It's something that Tesla turned on and off. And it means you've got maximum access to their autopilot stuff. Now, because I wanted full self-driving capability on my new car, I had to then purchase it again for £6,800. It had gotten even more expensive because apparently it had gotten better. And £6,800 is a pretty massive chunk of the £17,940 that I owed. And that, right now, is the biggest thing that would stop me from potentially purchasing a Model Y. Because if we ignore full self-driving capability, the Model Y and the Model 3 are going to be roughly very similar prices. And if I was to get a good trading offer from Tesla once again on this second vehicle, it would maybe be £9,000 to get a Model Y, which we would be able to earn back quite quickly by making content about the Model Y. But if we had to purchase full self-driving capability, which by 2022 might be £7,500. That's what makes this a very expensive purchase for a very similar car. However, a month ago in January, a lovely fella called Pierre tweeted Elon Musk and he said, I paid full self-drive for my Model 3 in November. I now want to upgrade to Model Y. And your team tells me you don't value full self-drive in your trading offer because you can do the software upgrade for free. Want me to pay again full price for full self-drive? That's not fair. Change that. And Elon replied to him and he said, looking into this, no question that full self-drive should be viewed as reasonably valuable when doing a trading because of course it should be. It's just a software thing that Tesla can control. You don't have to come out to your car and do any upgrades or anything. It's all software based. So unfortunately for me on my first trade-in, I was a little bit ripped off there because my original trade-in offer didn't include the £5,000 which I'd spent on full self-drive and then I had to spend a further £6,800 to get full self-drive on this new car because they're not transferable. However, because Elon was looking into this a month ago, hopefully by 2022 full self-drive will at the very least be transferable to another car. I don't know if it will be. I do feel like it should be, but that would mean it would cost me a lot less to upgrade to a Model Y. And if that is the case, I would be very interested. If it isn't, it just feels like it's too expensive for such a similar vehicle. Now, I think it is worth mentioning Tesla Model S. They recently revealed details on their refresh. They've changed the interior so it looks very similar to the Model Y and the Model 3. I really, really like it. But it is a saloon car, so even if I was to upgrade to this one, I would have the small boot issue, and they are currently a lot more expensive. There's also the Tesla Model X, which is a very, very cool vehicle. I don't think they've announced any refresh plans, but presumably they're going to change the interior again so that it looks much more like the Model Y and the Model 3 and the Model S refresh. This car has even more space than the Model Y has, and it's got some very fancy cool features like doors opening themselves, the Falcon doors, of course. However, it's just really expensive. I can't afford that right now. The one I would want is like over £100,000, which is more than double what the Model Y would be. So it, it is just too pricey at the minute. And from a YouTube side of things, there'll be more people searching the new Model Y when it comes out in the UK than there will be people searching the Model X because that is a much older vehicle. So we'd probably get more views making videos about a Model Y. But that's it. That's just my thoughts on if I would get the Model Y or not. Let me know what you think. Basically, to summarize, I would get the Model Y if I could trade in my current Tesla for a good price. Price and it wouldn't cost too much to upgrade. But if I can't, it's not really worth it because the extra space that I'd get isn't a big issue at the moment. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. I make videos about Teslas every single Saturday, so do subscribe. Next week, we are thinking of purchasing the £1,500 acceleration upgrade, which means our 0 to 60 will go to below four seconds. Is that something you want to see us test out? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.